All right, this is AP, A, B, and B, C calculus. We're doing uh, unit six, section four, which is the fundamental theorem of calculus and accumulation functions. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so uh, let's talk about the first fundamental theorem of calculus, the FTC. The first FTC, because there's a second FTC. So if you integrate from A to B of F prime of X dx, you get f of b minus f of a. This fits with the accumulation stuff that we did in another video, right? If you integrate the rate of change, you get the change in accumulation of the actual function. So this is the area under the f prime curve from x equals a to x equals b, which means it gives us the accumulation of f of x from a to b. You might also see this as the integral from a to b of f of x dx equals capital F of b minus capital F of a, uh, where f prime of x uh, sorry, capital F prime of X is equal to F of X, and F of X, capital F of X, is called the antiderivative of lowercase f of X. And that's a lot because I hate capitalizing because uh, I clearly barely passed kindergarten, but we'll get through it. Okay, so moving on. Uh, so we're going to use geometry uh, and the given graph to find the exact value of the definite integral that I gave you here. So this is the graph of Y equals uh, 3 halves X. And I want you to find uh, the integral from 0 to 4 of 3, uh, 3 halves x dx. Well, this means the area under the curve, right? Well, since this is a triangle, right, it's a triangle of base 4 and height 6, this is going to be 1 half the base times the height, which is going to be 12. That's it. I'm just going to use geometry to find that area, right, the area under this curve from 0 to 4. All right, you're going to go ahead and try one on your own. You're going to use geometry to find the shaded area I gave you from 1 to 4. This is the integral from 1 to 4 of x plus 2. So uh, you can pause me if you want to do it by yourself, but this is a trapezoid, right? One base is 3, the other base is 6, and the height is 3, right, from 1 to 4. So this is going to be 1 half the height times the sum of the bases, right, which is going to be a 1 half uh, times a 27, so 27 halves. Now you're going to learn how to actually uh, evaluate these integrals later, but for right now we're going to use some geometry. Okay, so the graph of f prime consisting of a semicircle uh, of radius 2 and a line is provided. Uh, we're going to use geometry and the given graph to evaluate the integral from 0 to 5 of f prime of x dx. So essentially I want you to find that blue area. Well, that is going to be a quarter circle, so pi r squared times the one-fourth, right? That would be my quarter circle, right? That's this, plus one-half the base, which seems to be three units, times the height, which is also three. So I get that this integral seems to be a pi, because that would be four pi over four, uh, plus nine halves. And that's the best it gets. You shouldn't change it. You shouldn't estimate pi. Now, given that f of 0 is 4, what is f of 5? Well, the integral from 0 to 5 of f prime of x dx uh, by the first fundamental theorem of calculus is f of 5 minus f of 0. Well, I know, f, uh, I know this integral and I know f of 0. So the value of this integral was a pi plus 9 halves equals f of 5 minus f of 0, which was a 4. If I add the 4 over, I get pi plus, so 4 is 8 halves, so I'm going to get pi plus 17 halves equals my f of 5. You could also make it a decimal if you like, pi plus 8.5 better. All right, so now you're going to try one. Go ahead and pause me if you want. Uh, again, we're given the graph of f prime of x. We're going to use geometry to uh, and the given graph uh, to find the integral from 2 to 6 of f prime of x dx. So this is another trapezoid. Right? You have a base that's one unit high, you have a base that's three units high, and you have a height that is four units. So this is going to be one half the height times the sum of the bases, which I'm pretty sure is a one half of 16 or an eight. Now we know that f of two is seven and we want f of six. Well, the integral from two to six of f prime of x dx is equal to f of six minus f of two by the first fundamental theorem of calculus. So eight equals f of six minus 7. 15 is my f of 6. All right, moving on. All right, let's talk about the second fundamental theorem of calculus. And again, second FTC. 
Uh, okay, so this is a really complicated version of the second fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, I'm going to write over it and make it a little bit easier. If you differentiate an integral, they are opposite operations and they cancel. What ends up happening is you only get the integrand out, but you then have to take that integrand and plug in the bounds. So when you plug in the top bound, you get this f of the function, so f of the top bound, times the derivative of the top because there's a dt, right? And then when you plug in the bottom bound, you get f of the bottom bound times the derivative of the bottom bound, okay? Uh, now, most of the time, one of the two bounds is a constant and it just goes away. But this is the gist of how it's going to work. So let's walk through some second fundamental theorem of calculus practice. All right, so uh, we're going to find f prime. So f of x is the integral from 3 to cosine x of t squared. So f prime of x is going to be the derivative of an integral. What happens when you differentiate an integral is these cancel and I get cosine of x quantity squared times the derivative of cosine, which is a negative sign, minus, now technically I should plug in a 3 squared times the derivative of 3, but what I want you to notice is derivative of a constant is zero. So if you plug, if a constant value is plugged in, it's just gone. So my f prime of x is going to be negative cosine squared x sine x. And that's it. So let's try the second one. So my f prime of x is going to be the derivative with respect to x of an integral. So what's going to happen is when I differentiate an integral, the two actions cancel, and I'm just plugging in top bounds and bottom bounds. So I'm going to get that f prime of x is tangent of 7 times the derivative of 7, which is going to get knocked out, so I don't care, minus tangent of x cubed times the derivative of x cubed. So my final answer is that f prime of x is a negative 3x squared times the tangent of x cubed. All right, let's try the next one. So you go ahead and give this a try. Pause me so that you can try it without me. So for a, my f prime of x is going to be the derivative with respect to x of an integral. What happens when you do two opposite operations is they cancel and just give me the function inside the integral, right? So in the integrand. So I get this, right? Which means that my f prime of x is going to be 4e to the x plus 3, quantity to the fifth, times the derivative of e to the x minus a whole bunch of zero because when I plug the 4 in it's not going to matter because d4 is going to be a zero. So my final answer is any version of this. I'd probably put the e to the x at the front, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, uh, when you try the second one, right, uh, the derivative with respect to x of this integral. So I, and I should write that it's f prime of x is equal to. I did it everywhere else. I just didn't do it there. Uh, the derivative with respect to x of the integral from 6x squared to 10 of the natural log of t dt. Well, these cancel, and I'm just going to get that this is the natural log of 10 times the derivative of 10, but that's gone, minus the natural log of 6x squared times the derivative of the 6x squared. So you're likely to see that the answer is 12, uh, negative 12x natural log of 6x squared. That's how you're most likely to see that answer. All right, moving on. Okay, so uh, a particle moves along the y-axis such that its position is given by y of t equals an integration function, right? The integral from 0 uh, to t squared of 5x squared plus 6x minus 8 dx. Write an expression for v of t. So remember that v of t, right? So v of t is the same as y prime of t, right? So... If I want y prime of t, right, v of t is going to be the derivative with respect to, uh, to t, rather, sorry, my bad, of this integral, right? So what's going to happen is these are going to cancel, and I'm going to get that this is 5. t squared inside the x squared would be t to the fourth, plus 6 t squared in place of the x would be a t squared, minus 8, all times the derivative of t squared. Minus a bunch of zero, because when I plug in the bottom bound, it's going to, when I differentiate and do the derivative of zero, I just get zero. So my v of t is going to end up being a 10t to the fifth 
plus a 12t to the third minus a 16t. Okay. For the second part, part B, at t is 1, is the particle moving up or down? Justify your answer. So remember, up or down is just asking me for the sign of v of t, right? This just wants the sign of v of 1. That's the question, right? So v of 1 is going to be 10 plus 12 minus 16, right? Which is 22 minus 16, or 6. That's greater than 0. Uh, so because v of 1 is greater than 0, it's moving up. Right, that would be up, or if we were talking left and right motion, it would be, uh, it would be right. Okay. Uh, lastly, at t is one, is the speed of the is the particle speeding up or slowing down? Well, this is asking you about the signs of v of one and a of one. Right. So in order to answer this, I need to find a of t. Right. So a of t should be v prime of t. Right. Which would be fifty t to the fourth plus 36t squared minus 16. So a of 1 should be 50 plus 36 minus 16, right? Which seems to be a 70, and that's greater than 0. So because a of 1 and v of 1 have the same sign, right? Because we just established that, uh, that both of them are positive. Uh, so the particle is speeding up, right? It's not about which sign they have, it's just whether it's the same sign or different sign. So that's an example of a problem where you need the second fundamental theorem of calculus to even get started. Uh, again, the hint that you need the second fundamental theorem of calculus is that you're deriving an integral. Uh, when you differentiate an integral, it's probably the second fundamental theorem of calculus. All right, let's do a P4 and then that's it for this video. All right, so a particle moves along the y-axis such that its position is given by this thing write uh, the expression for velocity, then you're going to answer the same basic two questions but that we did in the last example. All right, so uh, v of t should be y prime of t, right, which should be the derivative with respect to t of the integral from 3t cubed to 18 of 2x minus 10 dx. Oh, one thing to notice that I don't know if you noticed in the previous examples, um, this, in, this variable and this variable are never the same. So the ones that are inside the integral have to be different than the ones that are in the bounds. So in some examples, this was uh, down here was an x and this was a, these were all t's. In some examples, these have been t's and these have all been x's. But just to be clear, they can't be the same letter uh, in a particular problem. So uh, so my v of t seems to be uh, this whole top bound is going to be a bunch of zero, right? Like you can plug in the 18 if you want, but it's going to be a bunch of zero minus uh, two times this three t cubed minus 10 right, that whole thing, uh, times the derivative of 3t cubed, which is going to be a 9t squared, right. So I think I get, if I clean this up a little bit, I think I get a negative 54t to the fifth, right, because this is a, like, this is a negative 6t cubed uh, minus 10, uh, sorry, plus 10 rather, all times a 9t squared, right, because there's a negative. Uh, so I get negative 54t to the fifth uh, plus a 90t to the second, right, so uh, v of negative 1, right, if we want moving up or down, we really just want to know the sign of v of negative 1. Well, that's going to be a negative 54 times a negative 1 plus a 90, sorry, that's a 90, times a, a regular 1, right? Those are both positive numbers, right? So I get 144, which is greater than 0. So v of negative 1 is greater than 0, so it's moving up. Uh, and then speeding up or slowing down is the same question we saw in the last example where we care about the sign of a and v. So I know that a of t should be v prime of t, which if I differentiate my v, um, I don't really care what negative 54 times 5 is, and we can talk about that in a sec, but I don't really care. Um, I'm only going to care if it becomes an issue where I'm concerned, uh, where I'm concerned about whether the number nets positive or negative, and I'm not sure I care right now. So a of negative 1, right, is going to be... Uh, a negative 54 times 5, right, uh, times a regular 1, minus a 180, right, because I'd be plugging in a negative 1. So that's definitely less than 0. That's the reason I don't care what negative 54 times 5 is, because this is a negative number and it's another negative number. That means they're definitely summing to a negative number. If this had been a positive value and this had been negative, then you would care which one is physically larger. But since they're all negative here, I don't really care. So 
Um, so see how they have opposite signs, right? So see how, um, so a of negative 1 and v of negative 1 have opposite signs. So slowing down at t is negative 1. Right? So slowing down because the opposite signs. And that's it for this video.